What's going on, everybody? This is Island Hopper TV coming to you from Rishi Cash here in northern India. Let's do it. That's right, guys. We are headed north to the Himalayan foothills from New Delhi. This drive took about four hours. So we're halfway between Delhi and Rishikesh, and uh, we stopped to get some food. Let's go inside. This food hall was actually veg. There's a saying up here called non-veg or veg. Veg meaning vegetarian, non-veg meaning not vegetarian, uh, mostly just bread. But it was a good stop along the way at this veg food hall. We did arrive late at night, so we pick up the next morning right here in Rishikesh. Here in Rishikesh, it is actually one of the primary places people go to learn about yoga. It sits right along the Ganga River. It's the most sacred and holy river in all of India. Kind of chilly. So we're down here along the Ganga River at Triveni Ghat. This is actually a Hindu temple. We're gonna walk up and down the river here and see what's going on down here. And we're gonna put our feet in the water. So the headwaters for this river actually originates way up in the Himalayas. You can see the Ganga River can really rise. That's why they have these water level meters right here. If you look up, water levels can even get up this high. I mean, the water is coming off of the Himalayas right here. So, I decided to put my feet in the water and chill out here. The Ganga River, right here in Rishikesh. It's kind of cold, but that's okay. It's coming straight off the Himalayas. I got some dongas that we're going to put in the Ganga River and we're going to light the incense. Okay. Okay, thank you. One second, one second. So as you can see, Triveni Ghat right here is sacred because it's a confluence for three rivers. You have the Yamuna, the Ganga, and the Saraquathi. Okay? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna leave Trevenigat and we're gonna go up into the town. Let's do it. My main mission here is going to be walk around the town here in the market and see who I can meet and then ultimately get someone to give us a tour. So I'm actually looking for a tuk-tuk driver to show us around. We'll see if we can find one. I was told a few years ago this used to be a popular place with yoga people. Uh, and nowadays, I didn't see anyone who was foreign. Every single person there appeared to be a local. There might have been some foreigners, but they weren't walking around the streets. And just to clarify what I mean by yoga people, I mean people who come from other places to learn yoga here. All right, well, we've uh, negotiated one hour for 1,000 rupees.
right, we're here at one of the oldest Hindu temples in the area, so we're gonna go walk around and see what's going on here. Yeah, we basically got the place to ourselves. Up high in the Himalayan foothills, you will find several different sanctuaries as well as these Hindu temples right here along the water. But the further you go up into the forest and up into the mountains, they do have more impressive sanctuaries that you can also visit. And as you can see, as the conquerors came through, they defaced the deities that were on the rocks. You can see they've also got a museum here. There's Shiva from the second century AD. It is a small museum, but they do have quite a bit of artifacts dating way back in time. So anyways, we're going to cross the Ganga River here on this awesome bridge and see what's going on upstream. And here we are at Birdwada Sikh Temple. We're going to go inside. Uh, every time you go into a Sikh temple, you actually have to put on a cover, a specific cover like this. Uh, wash your hands and feet, and make sure you're wearing shorts that go below your knees. Yeah, we came in here and we made friends already with very nice people. They invited us to come to Punjab, to the holy place, the original place of Sikhism. Kitchens are free. Kitchens are free, yeah. all the time. Free, Any, come as you are. Anyone. Anyone. Yeah, this is my yeah. baby. His name is, her name is Gurlinko. Gurlinko? Yeah. Gurlinko, nice like to that. meet you. All right, so we're along the Ganga River. You can see there's the Sita Bridge. The water levels can get way high up here, so they have it uh, pretty low levels right now, being that it's September. As soon as the Himalayas start getting snowpack and that stuff melts, water levels start rising way over here. Yeah, so one of the best ways to experience the Ganga River is to go on a whitewater rafting tour. Yeah, and when you come to Rishikesh, you can contact Lovey here. Hello, hi. Nice to meet you, sir. These are tour guides showing us all around. Very nice. It is Tuk Tuk. My, my name is Ravi Gordial. Come to Rishikesh, I'll tour you. Very nice. Nice place for thank you. And as you can see, the wood they're pulling out is actually for a cremation. Now we're gonna get some food at the Sitting Elephant restaurant. I don't know if it's veg or non-veg. They do have non-veg here, in case you were wondering. Uh, veg or non-veg means vegetarian or non-vegetarian, in case you didn't know. 
and I keep making a point of this because it is a big thing in India, especially in the north, find food that is non-veg or veg depending on the region you're in because a lot of people in India are vegetarian. All right, so we've made it to the fifth floor here at the Sitting Elephant. We've got great views of the Ganga River. We've also got the forest in the background. You can see how lush it is here. And of course, the hustle and bustle of Rishikesh. Soup here. This is lemon coriander soup. guys, today we're going to Hardawa and we are actually here on the last day of Ducera. All right, so we finally made it to Hardawa. We're going to walk around. It's the day of the festival, so we'll see what's going on down here. So it looks like we've got two bridges going across the Ganga because there's a couple different confluences that meet right here. This is one of the holiest places in Northern India. So we're gonna try and get across the river here. Now I will say this day in Hardawar was absolutely wild. I mean, what you're about to see is <laughs> quite interesting. I mean, for me, it was very exciting. King George, Emperor of India. Wow. East India Company. Wow. East India Company, one. Okay. So these coins from India? India. India. How much? 100 rupees. In case you're wondering, 100 rupees is about $1.22. are standing over the Ganga River and you can see many people swimming right behind me. This is a very popular place to bathe and you know hang out as you can see. Now I know what you're thinking. Did he jump in? And I definitely considered it and thought about it but from what I was told as the Ganga goes downstream it gets more and more polluted and I decided not to although I really really wanted to. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, I got this painting on my forehead for Ducera, but uh, I don't know exactly what it means. I just know that tonight they're going to be burning the deity Shiva, I believe, a wood statue. So, really crazy down here along the Ganga. Oh my gosh. Thank <laughs> you. 
10 rupees? 10 rupees? Okay, I take this one. Shiva. Shiva. I'm gonna get this for 60 rupees. Put it on. One tea? Yeah, this guy, he wants one tea. So we'll see what the tea looks like and maybe I'll get one too. So I misunderstood. I guess we were both getting a tea and I was actually waiting around for my tea. I was kind of observing the sanitation of this situation. Wasn't sure where the water came from, uh, where the actual ingredients were coming from, but I just went with it. So I think this is actually chai tea, but it tastes delicious. Yeah, so one of my rules with drinking the tea or any street food, as long as it's cooked really hot, like if it's steaming hot, I'll try it. Now, I don't know if that's always gonna be a good idea, but if it's cold, I don't want it. If it's hot, it's okay for me. And the idea is just simply boiling your water, right? When you boil the water, you kill the bacteria. That's kind of why I went ahead and drank whatever was hot. Yeah, you guys, you guys can see these guys here holding on to these chains. They do that because uh, the, the current is so strong. If they hold on to that, they can actually kind of relax in that strong, rapid current. Uh, but you can see it's a lot of people in there just kind of relaxing and enjoying that Himalayan snow melt. And if you choose to go to the temple, you actually have to remove your shoes before you go in there. So just keep that in mind. Maybe wearing some flip-flops or some sandals out here could be a good idea instead of wearing tennies and shoes with socks. Yeah, so we've made it to the other side here of the river. We're gonna see what's going on over here. Very festive. Lots of excitement out here. Showing the world India is an awesome job. If you guys are looking for a hotel in a great location, check out Ganga Lahari. It's right next to the monkeys, but nice place. They also got a rooftop. Well, we appear to have possibly made a friend just following us, but he's on his own agenda.
In case you're wondering why so many people are coming here for their pilgrimage to swim in the river, it's because they're basically washing away their sins. But the festival tonight actually begins after sunset, uh, around 6.30. So you can see people are starting to sit along the Ganja River here for that moment. And if you look across the way, you can see that rug. They've kind of created that pathway right outside the temple. Time. Yeah, they uh, asked me if I wanted to donate, so I donated a little something, not too much, but they give you a ticket. Let's give her a try. We did spend about four days, three nights up here in the northern India area. This is the Himalayan foothills. Uh, I would say I want to come back here and go further up into the Himalayas. As I left, I was realizing there's a lot more to see than just Rishikesh or Hardwar. Although I am happy that I saw uh, what I saw in Rishikesh and Hardwar. So if you guys enjoyed this, watch some more of our other videos in India and we'll see you on the next one.